Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm gonna do a tank guide for master mode because apparently there's not many tanks playing or in general not many people playing. So first off the gear I used. Giant reaper mask, giant golder, giant legging, and giant golder boots. Now you could use tier 12 but tier 12 really isn't worth in my opinion and it's not that big of a difference. Reaper mask you really need for the two times healing. It's really insane. And the hot fire I have is Ice Spray, it's just Sun Mobs, Astraea to hold out for defense and for right click absorption, and Life Steal. As for the end, I use to travel travel because I have, you have no mana as a tank. You have like 1000 dungeon runs. Last breath to lower the armor of mini bosses because as a tank you usually rush with people and kill mini bosses. This mini bosses are the hardest part in the floor. Silk Edge Sword, Leaping Sword, whatever you want to call it, it's just to stun the mobs, just like Ice Spray, and it's pretty useful for Shadow Assassins or Frozen Adventures. Earth Shard, it's good for the pass your passive forever, the wave thing. It's good for wave clear, and it reduces the seismic wave by two seconds. And it's good for clearing mobs around the mini boss usually. Spirit Leap, you need for Leaping to your teammates who are in need of killing a mini boss, or vice versa. And then Plasma Flux, it's just good for healing because my Master Mode team doesn't play with healer, so I need this often so I can heal and not die. If you die, it's a bad scenario. And then my inventory is just materials to help do secrets or more materials to leap and stuff. Now, since obviously I explained this, it's probably not the best because you need like gameplay, right? So I'm going to VOD review a clip. Wait, I'm just going to review a clip. So yeah. Okay, so we're back with the clip and let me explain the basics of the tank. So first of all, as a tank, you want to be rushing with your team. So like blood rushing because otherwise it'll be really slow blood rush because mini bosses are hard to kill. and. In my team, I have Average Sweat and Death Streaks rushing with me. Death Streaks is right click mage, so he clears all the mob rooms like this. And Average is left click mage, so he clear clears all the minis with me. And if it's a mob room, I go to the door and sit at the door and wait for them to clear the room and get the key. And when I open the door, and then here's another mob room, they clear it, and I go to the door. Now, Make, when you're going through these rooms and if there's like fairy room or something and like you skip a room on accident You have to make sure you don't drag any mobs out because if you do it's uh It's pretty bad. It, it'll probably slow down the rush a tiny bit, but here I ice spray it Because I dragged a few mobs out so I ice spray them so they don't follow me forever Or and then I kill it because why not? And then here is a mini room and then I ice spray it because so I can slow it. And I misclick my last breath because yeah. And then I start last breathing it for average to come. Now he is here, and then I am waiting for whatever. And then now we start clearing because the mini boss is done and like all the blood rush is done. So I go and clear the other mini rooms. I think there's one like right here. Yeah, there's a mini here. But here, there's a lot of mobs. I like center them, geometry yes, and I use my seismic weight and it's pretty good, it kills majority of the mobs. Here I use my plasma flux because I am it's needed for almost a lot of mini bosses because they do a lot of damage. I use the Australia to lifesteal a tiny bit. I'm almost dead though, so I use silk sword leaping sword whatever. And then I stun it. And the shot I just did was sleeping sword and an AOT on the ground. Because Leaping Sword, like the sun, only procs when you hit the ground. So like, if you leaping and hit the ground faster, it stuns it faster. So you can time it anytime you want. Here, Shadow Assassin's really annoying. I probably could have leaped a lot more so that it wouldn't TP as much as this. And yeah. Oh yeah, make sure you are not hitting the mini boss Or getting in the way of your mini boss clear. Because it would slow down the run by a lot. Or kill, it'll slow down the killing of the mini boss by a lot because as tank you have zero damage, so it's pointless hitting it unless you're life stealing. 
but besides that, it's really pointless. Here we go to another mini boss. I, it's being discovered, I found it, and I dropped down the plasma again. Last breath as usual. And then I used the seismic wave so that I clear the mobs around it so that left click mage doesn't so that he doesn't accidentally kill the mobs around it instead of hitting the mini boss. So he hits the mini boss and two taps it and then we go on. I think that's um, the clear is pretty much done, so I'll just skip to the boss phase, which is around here. Okay, now we're in the boss phase. So if you haven't watched my video on how to do M5, you just go up here and let them TP and then last one is the right one. But here we have uh, refined the strat and made it like this. Same concepts. I'm I'm the only one up here. The only tank only tank should be up here. And then your whole entire team should be around portal, like one block next to portal or so. And if they're up too far, it'll mess up the strat because they won't all TP to you. So yeah. You just want to be here, be up front. See Rustoffs, he moves back because I told him to, or we told him to in Discord. So yeah. Then I say TP in a second. They TP, and then there's last one right there. I think it's yeah, it's grayish. White's right here, so that's gray. I tell him it's gray. They run out, kill it, and then I stand up here. This is an aggro spot I do, so. Which, how the yeah, aggro delivered is like you always have to attack them, left click attack, and they will keep aggroing. So what I do is stand at the far, furthest most corner you can stand in, like right next to the nether bricks, on top of this white thing, slabs I guess. Yeah, and then there's, sometimes there's one up top, which is nice, and you just keep auto attacking it with your left click, or just keep clicking on it, and it'll just keep aggroing them down below. And I should be standing on the outermost edge right now, but it doesn't really matter too much. You just want to be make sure you're on the outermost block or standing on it. So as you can see, these mobs aren't aggroing at all, and they don't TP unless you get knocked up one block higher. So if you're one block higher, this strat would not work at all. And then you have to go to plan B, which is the nether portal, where you just stand right inside the nether portal like you're TPing, and keep hit aggroing the mobs inside. So that your teammates outside have only one mob to kill, and they all, the only mob to kill, and that's the right one, and yeah. But if you were to get knocked down, don't ever try to come up here again, because the Livage will TP, and yeah. So if you get knocked down, you just stay inside portal, and yeah. Let's see, they kill the boss fast, because my team is really good, and the run is done. I hope you guys learned a lot from this, and... Yeah, if you want to learn about left-click mage, average, and death streaks have a video on it. I don't know if it's as uh, detailed as mine, as my tank guide, but you can go watch on their channel. It'll be in the description for both of them. And if you have any more questions, you can join my Discord and ask me. I may not respond because I, yeah, I'm lazy and I like, don't respond too fast, but I will respond eventually, which is all that matters, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed and take care.